I'm going to be going through chapter 14, just as a reminder of what Jesus said to his disciples, and then get to the part in verse 15 that I really want to talk about. So verse, the first part of the end of 13, you see Peter, uh, Jesus predicting Jesus, uh, Peter denial of Jesus, remember that? And so Peter was saying, no way, God, Jesus, I'm not going to deny you ever, you know, and Jesus like, hey, don't be careful what you're going to say, right? And he goes into verse 14, or uh, chapter 14, verse 1, it says, do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in the Lord. Uh, trust also in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And so Jesus goes out and tells the disciples after this moment, because now he's predicting his death and what's going to happen to him, and he's also predicting his, his obedience to the Father. Like, I'm going to obey and do exactly what my Father told me I should do. He's going to go and, and now he's like giving this last final message that we've been going through the last few weeks to the disciples, like, hey, remember what I told you through this whole time that you've been with me, and now he's going to sum it all up. And he says, remember, I have to do what my father told me to do, but also don't be worried about what's about to happen. Now, what did, do you think, I mean, I was thinking about this morning, don't you think the disciples kind of knew what was about to happen? Or do you think they were oblivious to what was about to happen? Do you think they knew that Jesus was going to be about to be arrested, and that he was going to die, and he was going to suffer, and then he was going to raise again, and then they would see him again, and then they would see him ascend into heaven and sitting at the right hand of God. Do you think they knew that? Or do you think they were just kind of like, wow, this is good teaching, Jesus. This is really great, positive, good things to live by. Or do you think they kind of began to understand after he washed their feet, maybe some principles or some of the things that was about to happen? That's what I was thinking about this morning. Did they know, or, or, or can we know what's going to happen next? Did they know about what was going to happen? And can we know what's about to happen in the world? I think it's important that we understand what they were going through in their minds and hearts and what we should maybe be going in our minds and heart about what's happening in the world today. Right? Because we're not of this world. Right? We're of a different world. And so we think a little bit differently than we see the things in this world. Right? Or we, at least we should. And so Jesus said this, he goes back, let's go to verse uh, 14, verse 20, he says, Do not let your heart be troubled, and he's talking about what was going to happen, to, and, and Peter's explaining everything to Peter, he says, trust in God, and trust in me. And then he goes to tell him the prediction, he says, in my father's house, there are all in this mansion, this room, there's many rooms, a mansion that I'm preparing for you, we see that later on, and Peter just talks about that, he says, if it were one not so, I would not tell you. So he's saying, I'm going there, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and then I'm going to come back, right? I said, I'm going there to prepare a place for you, verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. So I'm thinking, like, if I was a disciple, and we could have this Passover meal, we do it traditionally every year, we're getting prepared again for this one, we have the food, we have all the bread and the matzah and the, you know, everything's prepared the way it's supposed to be, and then um, they're sitting there, and now Jesus begins to say that, hey, I'm leaving this place, he wasn't talking about a physical, earthly home, right? And we know that now, but did they know it then? Like, I'm going someplace, I'm going to prepare it. And then at the end of this, you'll see, he says, come on, let's get up and go. So I was wondering, before you get arrested, in the last of verse, uh, the end of the uh, verse four, chapter 14, he says, come on now, let us leave. So I was wondering, like, hey, we can go check out this new house, this new mansion, or this new cabin or something, I don't know. But they were, they were thinking that he was preparing a place for them. Now, I want to jump forward to, because um, Pastor Andrew did a marvelous job talking about the verse... 11 through uh, 15, but I'm going to go to verse 15. It says, If you love me, talking to the disciples now, they're in this meal, they just got their feet washed by Jesus. Peter was talked about, um, Philip asked a question, and then and Jesus answered the question, and then he says this in verse 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. 
And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. So let's stop there for a second. Let's talk about this love thing, okay? So it says, if you love me, and, or you say, and I'm, some Bibles say and, but it says the comma here, if you love me. So let's just talk about that. I had examined myself as I was preparing this. Do I love God? Do I really love Jesus? And then I, you know, I did the little word search. Do you ever do that? You know, when you study the Bible, you do the word search. Like, is it, the, is it, the, is it a phileo love? Is it the physical love? Or is it the other love that we know, agape love? What is, which one is he referring to here, right? And most of us here are scholars, so they will know that if you look in the, the concordance, you look up this particular love, it's called uh, agape, which is God's, you know, unconditional love. I mean, it's, it's there's nothing you can do to earn it. It's like, I love you unconditionally. And God's love is amazing. So it says, if you agape me, if you love me with everything within you. I, I had to take a moment while I was doing this thing, like, do I love God that much? I, I don't know anything else. I mean, ever since I've been saved, I've kind of loved God all the time. I mean, I desire to be with God. I can't wait to get alone with God. I love reading the Word. I just love that part where I spend time with Father God in His presence. No radios, nothing going on, just being there alone with God. I can't, I, I, that's my heart's beat. I love doing that. And I'm thinking, do I love Him that much continuously? I thought I'd just put out there today. How, how much do you love God? And if I love God that much, am I willing to do everything He commands me to do? That's, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I have to do some things for God. But when He was talking, if you put it back in the context of the story, He was about to get arrested and be basically... Uh, going through the most horrific death on earth at that time, and then be put on a cross and was buried. And he was sharing with his disciples at that very moment, do you love me? And will you do it? I, I don't think that's changed over time. Do you? I think God's still asking us the same question today. Do you love him? And will you obey him? And then he says, and I will ask. And then, if you will, this is kind of interesting because I was, I was wondering where the power of the church is today and not our church but the church overall as Christians and where's the power I believe it's in prayer I mean I think we get that uh, so everybody be here next Saturday right um, we need God's answers for things but I think he's telling us love me and then do what I command you to do and then I'm going to help give you a helper right he says, if you love me and you obey me, he says then, right here, he's telling his disciples, he says, and I will ask the Father. Jesus is going to ask on your behalf, the Father, to give us this comforter, right? This com My Bible says counselor. What does your Bible say? Does it say comfort? comforter? Comforter, counselor. How many, how many Bibles say helper? Your Bible, ESV says helper, right? So Jesus said, I'm going to send you now. I want you to love me. I want you to obey me, and I'm going to send you a helper. How many need a helper today? Right? How many need a helper? Like, we need, like, I want to obey God, and I want to love God with all my heart, soul, mind. Because you said, that's another word that you said. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, everything within you. Love God. And I'm like, okay. Like, yeah, there's times I think I'm right there. Right? I think I'm like perfectly in love with God, and then there's other times I don't think I am. It's can I be open confession today? Is that all right? Can we like we're going on in this life and we're doing this great thing for God and God's moving in our lives? We hear His voice. We're being led by His Spirit. We're doing all these wonderful things. Also, and then we get to this point where we're not. Does anybody? Yeah. Is that just me? You know what I'm saying? That we're just not. Maybe it's some of the saints that are a little bit older. You know, you go through this thing and all of a sudden now we're just you know it's like it becomes almost just a routine of life. It's not a pursuit of God. Mm -hmm. Right? So my heart's desire today is that we fall in love with God and we obey His commands. Because definitely we don't want to not obey Him in anything. Because that would be like, there's other stories about sheep and goats. We'll get to that some other time.
Like, we want to obey God and all these things, right? And then he said, we're going to send you, verse 16, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Yeah. Everybody say that with me, the spirit of truth. Now, I don't know about you, but, I mean, don't we need, like, a little bit of truth in the world today? Like, is there some kind of level of truth that we should have, that we shouldn't have to waver in our faith? We just know that whatever we see around us is not so important. It's like the world is going to lead us to destruction, but God will lead us through His Spirit to truth of what's going on in our life personally, and I think what's happening in the world. And then, of course, it has to do with the message that they're going to get in their heart very soon, that they're going to be able to proclaim the truth to the Jewish nation at that time and into the world that they will see some of them that will be preaching to the Gentiles and Jews. But they, the truth will be in them. They'll know it. They're, they will know absolute truth when the Spirit of God comes upon them. Man. So not only do I love God with all my heart, I'm going to obey what He says, but I'm going to have a helper to help me to know what the truth is in this world. How many want to know what the truth is in this world? I mean, I tell you, you know, I mean, I've heard old preachers from a long time ago, and they were saying this, and I'm going to say it again today. I mean, Jesus is coming back. Amen. The world is dying, right? And our job is to proclaim the gospel. We need help. How many need help with that? Like, we need to proclaim the truth about what Jesus did to a dying world, because that's the only hope they have. I mean, religion can't do it. Joining the church can't do it. Doing good works can't do it. Not only saying, but what we need to teach them is who Jesus is and what he did for them. And they'll, go, they'll reject that. But they, the truth, as you speak it, that will penetrate their heart. It's a seed planted in there. And, and, and the Holy Spirit will, will, will cultivate that through maybe another Christian or something else happening in their lives. They'll come to Jesus. But our job is to proclaim good news. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He died for the sins of the world. You and me, our sins are forgiven. I think that's a given here, and here, but has got that one, right? We can ask God to forgive us of anything in our lives that is not right with Him. He'll forgive you instantly if you believe in your heart that's true. Amen. I didn't want to amen. Two amens, maybe? Come on. How about a little nod in the head? I guess I, <laughs> right? Because we need to be reminded that when we stumble or when unbelief comes into our heart, God's going to forgive us of that and take it out of us if we just allow Him to do so, right? And the Holy Spirit is going to do that for us. Now listen to the next verse, verse um, the second part of that verse 17. says, The world cannot accept Him because it is neither sees Him or knows Him. But you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. Who, who is He talking about? Who is Jesus talking about right here? The Holy Spirit. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit. The world can't understand the Holy Spirit. They can't accept that. But we can't because the Holy Spirit is in you when you said, initially, when you said yes to Jesus, he was deposited into you for your salvation. The Holy Spirit is part of your life. I used to describe it to the children in children's church. It was like that little cartoon with the little good angel on the shoulder and the little bad devil on the other shoulder. You ever see that cartoon, you know? And the little one, would, the, the devil would say, don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to obey your mom or dad. You don't have to listen. And the good little angel would say, oh, yes, you do, because, you know, whatever the benefit is. And then they would have that little argument. Do you ever have that little argument with the Holy Spirit? Is it just me? You know what I'm saying? When the Holy Spirit says, you should be doing this, and you want to do this instead, and He's right there telling you what to do, I believe we need to listen and know that the world cannot know what, the world doesn't understand it, but you can. Yes. You hear. Sometimes you hear and you don't want to listen. And I, I'm saying it nice. You know, but the Holy Spirit wants to guide you to truth in everything in your life. He wants to, I, I believe the Holy Spirit compels us to do what God's command us to do. I think the Holy Spirit helps us to love God when we have trouble loving God. Yes. Is, that, is that okay? Like, He reminds us of, of what happened. I, for, I don't know about you, the day I got saved, the day I said yes to Jesus, right? The Holy Spirit was teaching me at that moment what God did for me, right? And I begin to understand for the first time. The scales lifted, it fell from my eyes. I begin to see the things of God I'd never seen before. I saw my wretched life at that moment. <coughs> I began to see 
the love of God for the first time in my life. God wants you to love Him. Amen? He's going to give you the Holy Spirit to do that. Now, the world doesn't know it, and I think that's why we have to proclaim the truth. Because just like today in that moment, I say, so I read this and say, well, the world will never know who Jesus is then. So what's the purpose of preaching? I mean, that's what God's Word says. But we're supposed to preach, and as we proclaim, the Holy Spirit softens that heart of that unbeliever, and they begin to receive yes. who Jesus is. Amen? We're, I think we're going in, I think in the life of our church, I mean, we love each other here. I mean, it's amazing. We could, we'll do almost anything for each other, right? I think we got that, that thing down path, that family, that, uh, uh, the, I love the DNA group, I love our missional community groups, I love doing all that stuff. I think now we need to look at what is our overall purpose of why we're here. I just, you know, every time I preach, I say the same thing, right? Who's ever, right? If you've been here a couple weeks, you know that. Right? What's the big picture? It's, you know, I tell Pastor Andrew, I drove in, I said, we gotta get that, the roof cleaned off today because the snow's coming. And if we don't get the leaves off the roof, I mean, it's like, it's really important that we do that so in the spring, all the water goes in the right spot. And, because uh, we did all this work, we need the water to go in the right spot, right? And it's like, that's all, that's all good and dandy and all the stuff that we need to do around here, but the real mission of us as a body of believers is to see unbelievers come to Jesus. Amen. Or I like to call them pre-believers. Like, they're not quite believers yet. They're just, they don't know they're unbelievers. Right? pre I'm sorry, I say, I call them pre-Christians, but pre-Christians, like, there, there's a lot of them around here. They need Jesus. Well, let me go on, because I'm meddling a little bit too much. So, anyway, um, Verse 18, I will not leave you or as orphans, this is the Jesus speaking and why he brought the Holy Spirit. I will come to you, verse 19, before long, the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. So now he's just particularly talking about this death, that he'll, they'll see him again. Because I live, you will also live. The promise is so amazing here, that because I live, you will also live. So what was Jesus telling them? Now look at verse, uh, let's go back to verse 4. It says, you know the way to the place where I am going. So Jesus is going to prepare a place, verse 4. Then in verse 19 he says, because I live, you will also live. So what, what Jesus was predicting something here, I believe, he was telling them about their own death. Like, you're going to die and you're going to be with me. You're going to die for the gospel's sake and you're going to be with me. And if you see, he's telling us that. He said, so if you lose your life for my sake, you're going to be with me. It's fine. Have peace in that. We'll see that in a little bit. Take comfort in the fact that no matter what you go through as you proclaim the gospel for Jesus, no matter how you're persecuted, no matter what's going to, going to happen to you, listen, I went through that already and you're going to be with me. Amen. And we can take comfort in that right now. Right? I believe he's saying that not only for them at that moment, but it was recorded for us for this moment that we can look at this as we proclaim the gospel, and if persecution comes on you because of the gospel, it doesn't matter because you're going to be with Jesus. That thought, as they, you know, as you read the book of Martyrs, how each one of the disciples died. The horrible deaths, they all, most of them died a real horrible death. I think, wow, they did that for Jesus, right? Like, you can smile at your death and be comforted in that. Like, I don't know if I, do you ever, can I, you have inside of Bob's mind for a moment, right? Do you ever think about uh, the disciples uh, being burned at the stake? Like, okay, they're getting the wood, they probably beat you to death, probably half to death anyway, you're tied to a stake, and now they're going to light it on fire, and you just start praising Jesus right there at the moment. Do you ever, does anybody think about that, or just me? Yeah. Do you guys, come on, seriously, does anybody think about that? Sure. Yes. Yeah? I mean, like, I, I, would just, I would just think, like, all the Christians before me that died for Jesus, yeah. right? This young man just got, just uh, died, went to an island in India somewhere, uh -huh. right? Um, I don't know, I don't know, the, you know this? Andaman. Andaman? Yeah. Andaman. Andaman. And so, he, that group of people will, will not let anybody come to their island, so they'll kill anybody that comes there. But he was so compelled by God to go. So he writes in the journal to his mom and dad, hey, I might die, you know, on this adventure or whatever. I, can't, I didn't read the whole article, but just the fact that um, he was going, that, that compelled me to think about it, is that he was going no matter what happens, because that people group needs to know about Jesus. Because it says in the end days, right, that everybody will know before Jesus comes back, right? So here's an island, I don't know, he's a young man, he's like, I don't know, 25 years old or so, and he's going, 
to a place that he knows that possibly he could die, which he did. They, they shot him with arrows. They don't even know if he'll ever recover his body because they won't even let anybody there get him to come on the island. So I think I'm, I don't know if I would, I, I don't know. I know where I've been, okay? I've been in some dark places sharing Jesus. I have some stories. I have tons of stories of moments being in a place where I should be the only Christian in an area that I could have been arrested in. And I have a little Japanese island, <laughs> Pokemon, Japan. Anyway, there's, there's stories, you know, where the presence of God was so strong you had to go. Right? The presence of God was so powerful that I was compelled to go on the streets in the middle of the night when I shouldn't have been there, right? And talk to this young man about Jesus. Because I knew I had an appointment with somebody, but I didn't know who it was, I just knew I had to go. That only happens in prayer. Right. I was praying in, uh, we had a, it was an old bar, and it was on um, gate two, was gate number two at the Air Force Base. That was the name of the street. Uh, I don't know if that was his real name. It's probably a Japanese name, but that's what we call it, Gate 2 Street. And we had a, uh, the church had bought an old bar and converted it into a preaching point. So it was a little church in the middle of this, this nice area. It's pretty fun. This, um, it'd be like, I guess it'd be like State Street, right? Maybe worse than that. It was all the bars, all the junk that you would have on a rather military base. So that's where this place was. That's where. I, so I would pray, and the, that was before we had kids even. So we would pray in this little room we called the library because the local kids would come down and read the books we had in this library. And so we'd have books for them to read and we'd teach them English. Anyway, so that was our little prayer room. So it had a big area where the bar would normally be, and then we had chairs and tables and all that stuff around, and we'd play music. But in that closet, in that room, is where we would pray before we go out on the streets. And I would tell any group that would come and want to use the facility that they, before they went on the street, they'd have to pray for an hour. And they could not go by themselves. They had to go by two by two. That's what I felt from the word at that time. So that's what I told them they had to do. And we'd go out and pray. And the power of God was so powerful. They'd come back with testimonies, you know, rejoicing in what God has did because they went with God. And it was just a wonderful time. So we had people from all different flavors of churches, but was, we all had something in common. We, we knew that people were lost, and they needed Jesus. So we didn't talk about denomination, what our differences were. It was about preaching Jesus. Was that cool? We should, could we live like that? That would be amazing if we could live like that today, right? Just preaching Jesus and seeing people come to him. I believe this is the time for our church to see the Africa. Yeah. I'm praying that we see... Not only conversions or people coming to Jesus in your everyday life, but that we see that coming that here. Amen? That's what I'm praying for. So next Saturday when I come here to pray, that's what I'm praying for, for you and me, that we see the power of God begin to move in a mighty way, that not only in our lives, okay, we're good, we love Jesus, right? If you don't, we'll get it right today, okay, before we leave. And we can say, I love you, God, with all my heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, and I'll do whatever you want me to do. Can we, that, that'd be a great prayer, right? Mm -hmm. God, I love you, and I want to do exactly what you want me to do. I obey you, Father. Whatever you tell me to do, Father, I'm going to do it. Father, I'm going to give up whatever you want me to give up. I'm going to surrender whatever you need to surrender in my life. Father, I'm going to do what you want me to do. And then Jesus, I pray to the Father, and I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to help you do that. Right? And I want. I made a promise to God. I want to do whatever you command me to do, God. But I might get a little fleshly. I might get a little weak. I get a little exhausted. I might not be able to do what you want me to do. But God, by your Holy Spirit, I know I can. And then that's the preach his good news. Now let's look at the rest of this, okay? Um, as I finish up here. It says, um, verse 19. It says, because I live, you, you also will live. On that day... He's talking to disciples. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father. I am, I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Read that again, verse 20. On that day, you will realize, what is that day? Does anybody know what that day is? What is it? When he died. When, when he died, right? 
I think it's when he resurrected, but I, just close, right? When he died and when he resurrected, so you get a, you get uh, eleven points, and, you know, instead of twenty. But you know, uh, on that day, you, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. So, so we say when we teach children, hey, Jesus is in me, right? Anyway, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. So we show our love by doing what God tells us to do. That's what he says here. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too, I too will love him and show myself to him. And then he talks about Judas here. And Judas got to, uh, he said, go do what you have to do, Judas. Um, the Lord, um, uh, and then the question came, why, why did you show yourself? I, I said, but Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? And then, I mean, I already had to answer that before I read any further, right? Because, like, I already knew, like, when he said that, the question was asked, why are you show? Because you're going to show the world who I am. Because I'm in you. So we demonstrate God's love by showing it to the world. So Jesus showed it to disciples, disciples showed it to us, and now we show it to the world, right? So Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and and we will uh, come to him and make our home with him. Jesus made his home with us. He who uh, does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not of my own, but they belong to the Father who sent me. So he's repeating the heart of God to us to strengthen us to know that God is with us in every part of our lives. God is with you. He's told these words to Jesus, and Jesus told his words to disciples. They mean, I believe, they meant something for them at that moment about what they're going to go through, but also for us today to realize the Father is with us and is on our side. Verse 25, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and, and will remind you of everything I, I have said to you. And that's what's so important. Now, Jesus taught all the time. He talked in parables. They didn't understand all those parables. But then they began to understand because the Holy Spirit gave them true clarity of what he was saying. And I believe that's the Holy Spirit is telling us today. There's no confusion on what we should or shouldn't do. We have absolute truth to know as believers what we should do. Now, sometimes we struggle with personal things. God wants to help us through that. I'm not sitting here saying we're all perfect, and we have some personal issues in our lives, things that we've gone through as we grew up. There's all things that we go through, and it, it, it hinders us from doing the fullness of God. But to know the will of the Father is that you do exactly what He wants you to do. And He'll help you do it. It's not like you're on your own. He'll help you accomplish what He put in your heart to do. Let me say it this way. Don't let man hinder you from doing what God's called you to do. I would love, I mean, do you, anybody know Tommy Barnett and the, his son and all, all their, you know? Tommy Barnett has a huge church in Arizona, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Look it up online. It's a huge church. Every person in the church to him is a minister. And, and some of them come up to him and say, Pastor, I, we should go help the poor in this neighborhood. He goes, you should do that. And then somebody said, we should start a bus ministry. He goes, well, you should do that. And then he just he, he empowers them to do those things. Amen? And it's just amazing. And they have ministries. They have one lady, they converted a bus for people that are in a, like a elderly home, but they, they, can't, they can't walk, right? So they're, they're bedridden. They have a bus they have set up so they can put these beds in. They load them up on this bus, and then they unload them. And Sunday morning, they're like right on this part of the church. The church is huge, but anyway, they got the, they they are right there in, in church service, so they could be in church. And to her heart, it was important that they were able to come to church. Every neighborhood around there has little what they call sidewalk sidewalk Sunday schools. They go with these little little uh, vans. They they set up Sunday school. They love on kids in neighborhoods all over that area. There's an app you. Can, Motorcycle ministry, you name it, they have it because he empowers everyone. You ever been in a church like so I just want to say, hey, what is God telling you to do? Who is God telling you to reach? What is God saying in your heart? Because I like what Pastor Anderson said, we can't, we, like, we can't do it all, right? I, I, I'm finally admitting that, so I just said, <laughs> I'm admitting that to you. Uh, we can't do it all, but God has a plan. And he knows what it is, and he's put it in your heart. What has he told you to do? Then do it. 
Anyway, maybe we'll have that one night. We'll have like a uh, prayer time. We'll say, what is God telling us to do? We'll just tell, we'll set a popcorn prayer Thanksgiving. We'll have popcorn ministry ideas or, or what God's telling people to do. Amen? Because I believe he's speaking. And I believe each, each one of us, us are uniquely born in, in God's kingdom. And we have a, a story and a vision to share with each other to, for encouragement, but then for a, a lost and dying world that needs to know hope and his love and his grace and his forgiveness and everything else and his healing. How many know that there's healing that needs to be done in this town, right? Because some bad things have been happening to, to believers and unbelievers alike. People need to know the love of God our Father. Amen? Amen. amen. All right. Three of us said amen, so I'm just going to, I'm believing all of us will be <laughs> saying amen. Yep. Uh, God is so good. He's so good to me. Okay, let's look at the last part of this. Verse 23. Uh, well, I read it already, but uh, verse 25, I'm sorry. All this I have spoken, uh, spoken while you were with me, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and it will remind you of everything I have said to you. Now the verse 27 is so important. Peace I leave you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you, give you as the world gives. I do not let your do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. So he's saying to you, there's gonna be a lot of stuff happening. And I think even in our life today, we there are a lot of challenges and things that go on. But he's saying peace. Not like the world can give you with the uh, security and hope that the world can give, but true peace for eternal life that he gives us. And we have hope in that. He says, I give that to you. So don't let your heart be troubled. Don't wor worry. Don't be scared. Don't try to figure this out. God's got it all figured out already. All we have to do is be, be obedient. Don't be troubled about what's about to happen. I was thinking about, um, when I was reading this this morning, like, over again, I think about uh, Tina's grandfather, who uh, uh, died in prison for writing the, for finishing writing the, the, the New Testament. His 26 grandfathers removed. He was arrested, he was beat, he was put in prison, he was not allowed to see his family, his, his wife and children, uh, all the way up to his death, he didn't, wasn't able to see them. It was a martyr's death for that. I'm thinking, he probably at that moment, had the peace of God and not worried about what he's about to do. He knew the punishment. He knew what was going to happen, but at that point, at, 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 at his death, he, yeah, God must have gave him an overwhelming amount of peace at that moment. I think he can do that for us even today, and we're not going through that kind of trouble in our lives. Amen? I think God will give you peace in your heart. Don't worry. Don't be troubled. God's got this, and you can, all you have to do is love him and obey him. And it says, do not be afraid. The last part, I will just finish up reading here. It says, you heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to, to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now because, before it happens, so that when it ha does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer. For the prince of this world, Satan, is coming. And he's going to... To go through this horrible death, he has no hold on me. That's what's so awesome. Even though Jesus went through this death and it was a horrible death, it, did, it wasn't because of Satan, it was because he's being obedient to the Father so he can pay for the penalty of death, our death, our sins for, and for the world. But the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. And then he said, Come, let's go. And he goes off to. Uh, he leaves that place. I think, come, let's go. Where we're going? Like, we're going to go to the mansion? We're going to go to heaven with him at this moment? I, mean, I don't know how, if I was sitting there at that moment as a disciple, what would I be thinking? But then he goes on and continues to teach and he wants to guard. And soon after they get arrested, we'll talk about a little bit of that in a few weeks. But anyway, God, I believe, is telling us two things this morning that we need to re examine. Do we love God? With all our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength, and will we do exactly what he's called us to do? Do you love him? 
And most of us here can say, yeah, Pastor, I love God. Right? That's like, that's, that's like the easy of the two. Like, yeah, I mean, he forgave me. He changed my life. I could have been wherever I could have been. I don't know what I could even can't imagine where I could have been if I didn't know Jesus. So yeah, I love him. And then I do, I do what he's commanded us to do. And I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a universal. I think it's for all of us. I don't think it's just for the disciples at that moment. I think it's for us today. What are God's calling us to do? I think we set it up really good here. We have a uh, missional community. We're teaching the gospel over and over and over again so we can get it in our heart. Like, what is the gospel, right? It's not religion. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. We're sharing Jesus. I'm sharing my experience as much as I'm sharing what Jesus did for somebody. I love when the conversation goes from past what I experienced to Jesus in that person's life. Right? How can Jesus help you? And what do you do for you? And then see them accept that because the truth, the Holy Spirit helps them understand the truth of the reality. So let's make a commitment. Can we do that? I know this is probably the end of the year thing. We're getting close to the end of the year, so we'll speak a little bit more about this later. But like, can we make a commitment? Like, yes, I want to love God. And yes, I will do what He commanded me to yes. do. And yes, may this be the kicker. Yes, I will move let the Holy Spirit help me. Amen. Yes, I'll let the Holy Spirit help me. Because the Father said the Holy Spirit would help you. Yes. Understand what I'm saying. Let's stand together.